Mmm, well, drinky air actually, so yes, it's empty. I got it out because I want to show you this extraordinary mug which has got thermochromic ink on the outside and it changes dramatically when you put hot water inside, which I'll do in a moment. But just remind yourself what the global map looks like. It's quite normal, it appears in all the books, geography at school and elsewhere. So what happens when global warming, if it does occur, what happens when all the ice melts and the sea levels rise? Well, we'll have a look. Let's put some hot water in it and collect global warming action. It happens very quickly, the effect here, because it's extraordinarily quick. You see America, for instance, if you look down at the bottom there, we've got South America has got a huge incursion of water into the Amazon Basin, which is very low lying. In North America, well, the bottom a bit, poor old Florida, I'm afraid, goes under, but um, and up at the top, Hudson Bay also enlarges hugely. If you come over to Europe, across the Atlantic, we lose much of Northern Europe, Denmark and so on. The, um, Baltic Sea is usually enclosed. There's also a large incursion of water into Central Asia, which is interesting that, I'd forgotten that, but Black Sea into the Caspian Sea into the Aral Sea, huge incursion of seawater there. And even in Asia, in India, Northern India, I think Bangladesh, that goes under. But there's not all bad news, because you have to remember that Greenland, for instance, which is the biggest island in the world, and Antarctic too, both ice-covered, uninhabitable. When the ice melts, they will become inhabitable. You'll be able to recolonize them, so there'll be a, probably a net gain of land, actually. But it's still dramatic to see how the Earth's map changes when we get a sea level rise, and we get, apparently, from global warming. There's a second one I want to show, and I need to have some more hot water in it, so I think I'll be a little bit... Um, uh, careful with the hot water and use it here so as to show you what, what it does. This is a very interesting one because it's got um, a tea bag placed at the, on the right hand side and when you tip it over the water is now clear of the tea bag and nothing's happening. When it's tilted this way it goes into the tea bag and steeps and the two mix together very nicely. So you leave it there and I'll leave it for up to two or three minutes and show some other things. We'll find it, this will turn a nice brown colour depending on how much, how strong the tea you want it to be. But it's a lovely way of, of controlling the amount of um, steeping they've got with a tea bag in the water. So a very, very clever idea which has come out of Amsterdam all those years ago. There's a nice little collection here of very unusual mugs, and some of them are glass, some of them are china, some of them are plastic. Here's a, here's a glass one, for instance, which is a nice one. It's a, it's a pessimist's mug, and I like the base in it too, which says it's, um, what's it, despair, www.despair.com, yes. Why is it called a pessimist's mug? Well, on the back of it, it shows the halfway point. When you're halfway through the drink, it's, it says it's half full. But no, no, the despairer would say it's half empty. Nearly. Yes, well, there we are. That's a, a nice definition of, a, of a, uh, a pessimist, I suppose. And here's another plastic one which I've had for many years. It's a gaming one. Wow. And the idea is have a game of dice. And when you're halfway through or you want a little break, you pour some, water, you pour some whiskey or some drink into it uh, and enjoy a drink. And then when it's dried out, you can shake away. And it's nice that you've got the dice actually inside there, completely entrapped so that they can't escape. Uh, and it stops you losing the dice, so you can have a good game using something which is both a dice shaker and a, a drinking vessel at the same time. A nice, a nice economic use of both, both things. Here's another china cup, which is a beautiful demonstration of, of uh, anamorphic art, what's called cylindrical anamorphism. The cup itself has got this beautiful silver mirror effect on it, very, very elegant indeed. Well, the saucer has got a most peculiar picture of it, which is almost meaningless. I can't make any sense of that, can you? But when you put the mug into the saucer, it reflects the picture, and at a certain angle you'll see a very famous iconic picture, which Hollywood loved when they got Marilyn Monroe to stand over a grating where there was an updraft of air, and up went the skirt, and her shapely legs were shown, and people thought that's the best best little joke that the photographers have ever come up with. So, a famous moment in Hollywood history, 
Marilyn Monroe standing on the grating. And it's depicted in what is otherwise a little coffee cup. Nice one. This is a sweet little thing, isn't it? Mums, yes. Some mothers do have them. It's got a little heart shape, and this is for, I don't know, Mother's Day, perhaps? It's something, and of course, you can put, uh, you can put tea in there, or coffee, or some other drink like that. But it's uh, for mums, yes. A nice little, little one. Going back to plastic, this is a very clever use of something I've shown in a previous uh, video we did on, on uh, drinking vessels. It's got a sliding block puzzle, which is very, very well done in this one. I think it's much better than the other one I showed. It's showing a hundred dollar bill with um, Benjamin Franklin appearing on it like that. But the pieces slide beautifully smoothly and we can get into the distort by doing a bit of that and a bit of that goes down and so on. You can enjoy actually playing with the thing because it is a perfectly good functioning sliding block puzzle or 15 puzzle. At the same time, it's a drinking vessel and it combines the two very nicely. All the other versions I've got of this famous puzzle are completely flat and to have it working so well on a curved surface I think is a brilliant bit of design by the, by the designer. Here's a nice one which a friend of mine, Gerard Darby, has lent me, which I do like very much indeed. It's some, um, he calls it my cup of tea. And the idea is to choose your own brew of tea. You look inside and there you've got all these um, different shades of brown, depending on how strong or how weak you like your tea. You can choose a particular colour. When it matches the one there, that's strong enough. You can take the tea leaves out or the tea bag and stop it steeping and getting stronger. So a nice way of reminding yourself how you like your tea to be. Good one. And then this is a particularly favourite one of his, which I think is brilliant. There are many offices where they often find people are drinking or using each other's mugs and very often not washing them up and it's always a lot of burning contention. So this is my mug and you can't use it because it's got a hole in it. <laughs> Any liquid in there would just spill straight out. So how would I use it? Well, I would keep in my pocket or somewhere else the plug, the key. And when that's in there, it firmly fits in, and that is now going to be completely leak-proof, and it's going to allow you to enjoy your drink. And then when you've finished, you wash it up, you take the plug out and put it back in your pocket, and no one else can use your mug. It says stop, and quite right too, because you mustn't put anything in it. It'll misbehave. Here's one similar to one I was showing before from Long Crane and Broxton about ooh, 20 years ago. It's one of those very nice plastic mugs with a double jacket in it and there's water and very nice little heart shaped pieces in it. Very, very sweet this. So when you're drinking you can actually enjoy the sight of some twinkly bits which are falling down under gravity and the hearts themselves, some of which float and some of which stink and there's ones on the bottom as well. It's a very nice little thing to enjoy and a bit of shaking like that but you can't have too much of that when you're actually drinking with it, but it's a nice way of enjoying a, a very a visual, pleasing sight when you're enjoying a drink in a drink bar. So a good one, that. <laughs> this is another sweet one from Gerard. I love this idea. It's a, it's a, a mug for golfing world. It's even got a little tiny little golf ball, would you believe? There we are. There's a golf ball. And it's got a golf hole there. It's got a number one hole here and it's got a number 18 hole there and the idea is to use this little golf stick and try and get it in so it goes into the number one or the number 18. And when you finish playing with the golf and you wash up the cup you can put that back in there like that and put it away. It's a nice little drinking vessel for the golfing fraternity. So a very sweet one. Here's one which should really, I've got water in it so I'll have a go with, but it should really be with a cocktail because the actual um, vessel, the bottom bit, is integral with this straw. When I drink here Yep, that's all right. Fresh water, London water. But it's a nice concept to have that as, as a, a complete entity on its own. No separate straw needed. You notice this is exactly up to the level of this, so there's no siphoning because it comes well above. So, nice idea of that. So look at this, see how this is doing. Oh, yes, look, that's got a nice brown colour now. Look at that. See, if I'm thinking that's dark enough for me, I don't want any more steeping. I just tilt it like this. And now it's, the tea bag is high and dry and won't, infu it won't infuse anymore with the, with the liquid. So you can then enjoy your cup of tea. So you just keep an eye on it all, all the time. And there's no need to take the tea bag out because it's already integral. So a very clever bit of design for a teacup that from the Dutch. And the last item is um, 
Well, it's uh, an empty mug, is it? Well, no, this is more than this. This is something we actually had on our website at one time. It's got batteries in it in the base. It's got a motor in it. Very dark inside, but I'll show you in a minute very visually what's going to happen. There's actually a tiny little propeller blade in there, which turns around, and there's a switch here which turns it on. So we'll put something in which we then can see, and I've chosen to put a bit of milk in it. It's typically, this is very good for making a milkshake. We've now got milk in it. All we've got to do is push the button, and it'll stir it and quite vigorously. Watch the effect. It's wonderful. Oh, my. A few seconds of that, and it's completely stirred up. Lovely idea, isn't it? So that's just one of my favourite mugs, I think. So I collect mugs, as you can see. Is it a mugs game? I don't know, but I love doing it. I'm still looking for them.